Welcome to Opel STV. I'm in Amsterdam together with Sven Baumann from Seymour Capital. Sven, please introduce yourself and your company. I'm Sven Baumann, a founder and CEO of Seymour. The company was founded in 2008 with the backing of Egon as an investor and as, as a shareholder. We run a European market neutral long short equities fund. Uh, the fund was launched in June 2008 and with 25 million seeding from Egon and uh, the seeding amounts to over 400 million in 2009. And since then we have uh, yeah, raised some assets from, from institutions and uh, private wealth, uh, high, high net worth individuals. And uh, currently the assets uh, stand at uh, 750 million US dollars. I started uh, my career uh, at ING in 1995. Uh, over there I managed Europe, uh, Eastern European equities in 2000, I uh, moved over to Egon. Over there, I was responsible, responsible for Japanese equities, later on also for global portfolios and, and pockets of, uh, of the Asian portfolio. In 2005, they uh, promoted me to head of equities. And in uh, 2008, I was able to make a spin-off and uh, yeah, start Seymour Capital. So at Seymour, we're in total with uh, 18 people. We have six people on the, the portfolio management side. Uh, three IT guys, uh, which help us with setting up uh, and maintaining the database, with a lot of doing a lot of program programming. And next to that, we have a big team of uh, operations, legal support, and and, uh, and other staff. Now, Sven, explain to us more in detail what's special about your strategy. And I understand that you had been really performing very well. So please go into that as well. So we use quantitative strategies for stock selection as well as for portfolio construction. We have a disciplined and unemotional un approach to, uh, to investing. If you look at our model, yeah, we use a multi-factor dynamic uh, stock selection model, which means that we rank our full universe in Europe over a, a large number of factors in total 50. These 50 factors are clustered in, into four quadrants, uh, factor families, meaning Valuation, which is the most important one, is around one third of the total model. Next to that, we have momentum, another third. And finally, we have profitability and growth and quality factors included. In essence, what we do with that model is that we rank all the stocks on a daily basis. And uh, we select companies which have sound business fundamentals, improving business fundamentals, are decently valued and have favorable stock and price trends. So what makes our model special compared to other, those other quant managers is that, first of all, our model is adaptive, which means that we can change the factor weights in our model depending on where we are in the, the economic cycle. For this, we use three models. First of all, a regime changing model, where we can see where we are in the economic cycle. So, for example, if we are in a recovery phase, that means that Cyclical value stocks, stocks with a low price to book, low price to sales, uh, typically do well. Whilst if we are, are in, in a recession phase, that means that uh, investors are looking for safe havens and do value stocks which have uh, strong quality metrics. Secondly, we look at a macroeconomic distance model, which is more a medium term model, where we compare the current economic environment and market environment to environments from the past. So we compare, for example, the change of the yield curve over the last three months, the change of the oil price, the earnings growth, and we compare that with all the months in the past and, and look for those months which are most resemblant. And the next step is then to see which style that did work well the month thereafter. And finally, our third model is, is a return continuation model. A lot of factors in our model, like price momentum, earnings momentum, valuation, do have some momentum behind them. This means that if they have done well during the last month, they typically continue to the, uh, the next month. So based on those, all those signals, Sven Bakker, our CIO, and I make up our minds whether we want to add or detract weight to certain factors. We don't uh, turn the model from left to right, so it's pure, purely to fine tune the model and to, to make it more powerful in the current, uh, current environment. Secondly, uh, what's unique uh, to our model is that 
Yeah, we blend quantitative rigor with fundamental insights. We have three portfolio managers who still cover a number of sectors. And they look at the companies which are included in that sector. They, see, they speak to, uh, to sector analysts from broker houses. They read research. And based on that fundamental knowledge, we have designed a risk overlay, means, which means that they can put in holding restrictions for, for those kind of stocks. So if there's M&A looming in a certain stock, if we don't uh, trust the board, if there are governance issues, uh, litigation risks, we can say, okay, for this stock, it's too risky to go the full way. So instead of our typical range of minus three to plus three, we limit the potential size in such a stock to minus one and plus one. If there's M&A looming, maybe better not to short stock because companies who take over other companies, they tend to look at completely different things than we do. And based on that, we can limit the short side. So that has helped us in the past in, in a number of yeah, cases. So we, uh, that means that um, yeah, our strategy yeah, can be seen maybe as 90% quantitative and 10% fundamental. And we use those fundamental insights as a risk overlay. So it's not to overrule our model. It's just if the model says, okay, we have to go short, but M&A is looming, we just don't go short, for, for, but we don't go long in that stock. That, that's most, mostly important. And thirdly, uh, what makes us special compared to others is that uh, we put much more effort in the specification of single factors. Around half of our factors in our models, we, uh, for those factors, we rank our universe, uh, we rank stocks in our universe over the full universe, uh, being earnings momentum and price momentum. And via this, we pick up trends in the market. Yeah, if, if all the stocks, all chemical stocks are posting strong earnings momentum, analysts revising up their numbers, that uh, often means that yeah, it's a good place to be in. So it helps us uh, also to have some small sector tilts and country tilts in our portfolio. On the other hand, we have a number of factors where we rank stocks in the universe purely within their sectors, being mostly valuation factors. And we have to go back to the IT bubble yeah, to see that it makes sense. Uh, during that uh, stage, yeah, investors were buying we're buying expensive stocks, especially IT stocks. And if you would have uh, yeah, screened on stocks which are cheap, you would never have selected any IT stock in your portfolio and you would have massively underperformed. On the other hand, if you would have ranked stocks per sector on valuation, you would still have picked up some interesting IT stocks and your portfolio would have done okay during that period. So yeah, you mentioned our performance. This year has been an exceptionally good year for Seymour so far. So till the end of, uh, of August, the fund is up uh, around 14%. And uh, this also brings our three-year uh, number to, to around 10% and our five-year number to, to around 9% on average per year. So we have made uh, yeah, good money uh, during the last uh, five years on average. And uh, yeah, what makes the performance well good this year is that all the factors uh, seem to be working which we have uh, included in our models. So the year started off with, uh, with a risk on rally in, in Europe, meaning that uh, especially valuation factors were doing well. Uh, later on, from, from February to, uh, to August, earnings momentum uh, did uh, triumph. And uh, what we have seen lately is that quality factors have started to, uh, to perform. So overall, our model did ex work extremely well uh, for this year. So I'm looking at your monthly fund performance and by January of 2010 you did some very important changes to your model and basically since then you didn't have a negative year uh, which includes some years where other hedge funds um, significantly struggled. Tell me more, what did you do exactly in 2009 to 2010? What changes did you employ? And how have you been faring since then? First of all, we, uh, yeah, we put full focus on our multi-factor model. Before that, we also run two other models. First of all, a pair trading model, and secondly, a short-term reversal model. Given that the bid-ask spreads during 
yeah, after the global financial crisis had, had widened, those strategies uh, didn't really deliver performance. And we made a decision to, uh, to cut them. Secondly, we have emphasized, uh, put much more emphasis on uh, risk management, especially on the portfolio construction process. So since, since then, we have started to use the portfolio optimization process, uh, where we use the alpha ranks from our model uh, together with the, the restrictions we have on sectors, stocks, and, and countries. Uh, into uh, we f feed them into a risk uh, model, and based on that, uh, we come to an optimal combination of stocks. And um, yeah, certainly within our investment team, we also made some changes. So we have, uh, yeah, at the moment, we have only have portfolio managers. Uh, we have a strong uh, quantitative background, uh, like Sven Bakker, our CEO. He used to be uh, the, the head of quantitative. Uh, Portfolio management at PGGM, which is one of the largest pe uh, pension funds in the Netherlands. And next to that, we have uh, Rani Piputri. She came over from uh, the quant uh, desk of Egon. And then we have also, for example, uh, Louis Hay. He used to be uh, a sales side quant analyst at ING Bearings and also was rated one of the be best analysts within Europe in, uh, I think, from the top of my head, uh, 2006. So we have put, yeah, our, our, our process in total moved from, uh, let's say, being 60, 70 percent quant to 90 percent quant during that phase. Uh, since then, we have done uh, well. 2010 was a good year. 2011 was excellent. Excellent. Uh, we made almost uh, made uh, 18 percent in that year, and uh, that also has helped us to win some awards in the hedge fund industry in 2012. What made our performance do well in 2011 was that yeah, stocks which uh, ranked highly in a model were the ones which had strong quality metrics. So companies with a strong balance sheet, companies with stable earnings, low volatility, uh, they ranked highly in our model, supplemented with our dynamic overlay, which showed that we were in a, in a recession phase in Europe and that we had to put more emphasis on, on quality metrics. So that has helped us to select stocks which are, were low risk in 2011 and those were the ones which were bought by a lot of investors, uh, given that Europe, there was a, quite a lot of turmoil in Europe in 2011. The year thereafter we had a bit of, especially in January, a bit of setback, a reversal in the market. But overall, uh, still a small positive for the year. And last year, yeah, we also had a decent year. And as mentioned, yeah, 2014 is so far very good. Sven, do you also make money on the short side of your model? Absolutely. So if you look at our model, companies which are expensive, do show poor uh, earnings momentum and have bad balance sheets and, and uh, don't show any, any stability in terms of earnings over time. Those companies tend to underperform over the longer term. So if you look at our backtest results, you see that yeah, the, the contribution from the short side is at least as, as strong as from the long side. And that's also what we have seen this year, especially uh, during the second part of yeah, the first half and, and the last couple of months, is that uh, stocks which are low quality, high risk, they have underperformed in Europe and uh, that, that definitely have uh, helped us uh, throughout the year. Sven, explain to us in greater detail, how are you different from other quantitative managers? So within the quant space, there are three types of, uh, of, of quant investors. First of all, you have the high frequency guys. Uh, next to that, uh, you have quant investors who use and employ physics and other sciences into, the, into their uh, model, which are not really related to investing. What we do is uh, yeah, we have a multi-factor model. Uh, the, the factors we use are more or less the same as, as fundamental investors use. Uh, the ideas come from the academia, especially from the, uh, the finance area. So additional value is added by fine-tuning single factors. Some of our factors do have a asymmetric payoff, which means that yeah, just by selecting stocks 
which are at the bottom side helps you a lot. But selecting stocks which rank highly attractively on that factor doesn't really help you. Uh, one of the examples could be is, for example, strength, uh, balance sheet strength. If a company has a very strong balance sheet, it doesn't really matter for an equity investor if it's strong or decent. But if it's a very poor balance sheet, that's often a prelude for poor performance or even bankruptcy going forward. So for these kind of stocks, we just punish the, the stocks which are at the bottom side of the spectrum. And all the stocks which are above that, we, we rank more or less the same. Secondly, we look at value growth. If a stock has never behaved like a normal stock, or more like a deep value stock, we give, yeah, for that single stock, the model a bit more emphasizes on, on valuation. And on the other side, if stock has, has a very strong high profile and has never behaved like yeah, a normal stock, uh, we give the model more emphasizes on, on growth metrics. So in the five years you have been around, were there times where your models didn't work and what did you do about that? So yeah, a model uh, yeah, typically has a difficult time, first stage of an economic recovery. That's after we have seen a slowdown in the economy and subsequently a recession. During those two phases, yeah, you, you have seen that investors were shedding stocks which are high risk and were yeah, buying stocks which were high quality. Those stocks then tend to have strong price momentum, strong, relatively strong earnings momentum, are slowly getting expensive. On the other hand, when you're entering yeah, a recovery period, stocks which are then bought by investors are typically ones where there's a lot of hope, uh, which is not yet backed up by figures. So analysts are still negative about those companies. Price momentum has been quite poor. Those stocks often had a difficult time during the recession, so they don't make money. So on profitability and growth metrics, they rank very poorly. On earnings valuation based metrics, they also don't have, yeah, they don't have earnings, so they're, they're not, not, definitely not cheap. So what only makes them attractive is that they rank very strongly on price to book and price to sales. So the more balance sheet based valuation metrics. And if you then look at our multi-factor approach, yeah, which scores stocks over several metrics, those kind of stocks tend to pop up at the bottom side of, of the, the model scores. So if yeah, you run the risk that you, you short a lot of those stocks during that environment. And what helps us is the adaptiveness of the model. And when we see that macro in indicators are improving, that we are about to enter or entering a a recovery phase, we can add weight in the model to cyclical value metrics at the expense of quality metrics. And that then helps to cushion the, yeah, the difficult two or three months we have uh, during such a stage. You're doing European stocks. Why are you focusing on Europe? We see Europe as, as a sweet spot within, uh, with, yeah, within global context. Uh, we recently done uh, research and um, yeah, looked at several multi-factor models per region and also uh, comparing our European model not only to the other regions but also to a global model. And there we can see that yeah, the, the efficacy of, of the factors we have included in our universe is much stronger, for example, than in the US where the market is much more efficient and those factors uh, do tend to have a lower payoff than what we see over here. If you compare our model to, to Asia, uh, over there, its payoffs can be somewhat higher, but on the other hand, the transaction costs are much higher. And so after, yeah, if you look at the net returns, Europe definitely wins out compared to other regions, but also compared to global models. What benefits are you offering investors? In other words, so why do people invest with you? So investors like our fund for its uh, return characteristics, its transparency and institutional setup. On return characteristics, yeah, as mentioned, uh, we have, the fund has performed well over the last five years, on average 9%. Secondly, uh, what we have seen is that the correlation to equity markets, being it the S&P, Euro stocks or the FTSE, FTSE Europe has been 
completely absent. So the, the yeah, it's 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 zero. Second, uh, thirdly, if you compare our fund returns with yeah, with hedge fund peer groups like market neutral or long short, you also see that uh, our fund doesn't really uh, yeah correlate with others. So that means that we have done well when others have done uh, poorly and vice versa. And especially yeah, during those markets which were tough, uh, like in 2011 and to some extent this year, we did well and uh, others uh, had a have difficult time. What we also have is, uh, is transparency. Yeah, we are completely open about what we do. So uh, we can lay out our full process. We don't hide parts of it like, like some other quants uh, investors do. And finally, yeah, the institutional setup should also attract the investors. Yeah. We have a, a very strong operations team with over nine people. And we have selected uh, strong partners like uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, UBS, Merrill Lynch, and, uh, and soon also Barclays on the prime brokerage side, and have uh, Citibank as our administrator. So, yeah, we are definitely able to, uh, to help um, all the uh, institutional investors with the, their demands they have on yeah, reporting and transparency.